In my last video talking about some of the upcoming hardware to expect in 2020, we discussed rumors around Intel's supposed leaked 10th generation desktop CPU lineup. Now Intel are in a pretty rough spot with their desktop CPUs at the moment. In their server market and the mobile CPUs, they're doing quite fine. They've got a pretty firm grip when it comes to those two sectors, but specifically when it comes to desktop CPUs that you'd put in your gaming PC or workstation, they do cop quite the beating when it comes to AMD's current gen Ryzen CPUs. One thing we can almost say for certain is that if Intel do release a new desktop CPU lineup within the next six months, it's still going to be on the 14 nanometer process that the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th gen CPUs were also built on. The plus side of this is that seeing as we already have this architecture in our hands, by setting the rumored core and thread count configurations as well as the estimated clock speeds, we can pretty accurately simulate these 10th gen CPUs. Now it's not going to be perfect, there might be some other micro architecture tweaks between these 9th gen CPUs and the expected 10th gen CPUs in 2020, but it's going to be pretty damn close if they're still running on the 14 nanometer process. So what we want to find out today is if this is the case, uh, what kind of performance can we expect against the current third generation Ryzen CPUs? And more importantly, is it going to be enough to fend off the fourth generation Ryzen CPUs when they finally release as well in 2020? Let's take a look. So I think Intel's biggest problem right now when it comes to the configuration of their CPUs is the lack of hyper-threading for processors like the i3 and the i5. This is one of the reasons that AMD's Ryzen 5 3600 is so popular right now. Six cores, 12 threads at a reasonable price with decent single-threaded performance. It's exactly what the mainstream market is after. Intel's 9th gen i5, on the other hand, only has six threads in total. And I've demonstrated previously how not only is this not ideal for multi-threading performance in production workloads, but it can also be a problem when it comes to gaming in some titles. In summary, this is something that Intel well and truly knows, well, we would hope they would know anyway. Lack of hyper-threading for the i3 and the i5 is truly killing the sales of their mainstream processors, where the Ryzen 5 3600 and 2600 have been some of the most popular CPUs for that reason. So this is something that we see in these rumors that we will have a hyper-threading for the i3 and the i5. And given that this is such a shortcoming for Intel currently, I think that's going to be pretty accurate. So here is the rumored lineup. All i3s, i5s, and i7s will get hyper-threading support, whereas with 9th generation, they did not. And the i9 SKUs will supposedly get a bump up to 10 cores and 20 threads. Those CPUs in particular, we cannot simulate, seeing as we don't have a 10 core 9th gen CPU at the moment. So we'll have to leave that one out for now. Although I don't think a 10 core 20 thread Intel desktop CPU is going to be too competitive against the Ryzen 9 3900X and 3950X, which are 12 cores and 16 cores respectively, and are also on a mainstream socket. If Intel really want to compete against those two CPUs, they need to make sure that their pricing is just absolutely ridiculous because they definitely will not compete on multi-threading performance, that's for sure. The most interesting processes here for most of you though are undoubtedly going to be the new i3 and i5, seeing as these effectively represent the i7 7700K and i7 8700K, just with slightly lower clock speeds. It's quite odd to think that before AMD's first generation Ryzen CPUs had even hit the shelves, we were actually getting a quad-core i7. The hyper-threaded i5 is likely going to be some decent competition against the Ryzen 5 3600, but I'm actually expecting the hyper-threaded i3 to be a serious crowd favorite, because currently AMD's quad-core 8-threaded part, the 3400G, is nothing special at all. It's not running the Zen 2 silicon, it doesn't overclock that well, and if you don't find the onboard Vega graphics useful, it's just not that great value. So a quad-core hyper-threaded i3 that could overclock to 5 gigahertz could be an easy claim to the section of the market from Intel if the price is right. So here are the configurations that we're testing today that reflect what we see from the countless rumors. I've set the all core boost clock to 4.4 gigahertz for the i3 and i5 and the single core to 4.7, seeing as this is a 100 megahertz bump from the current corresponding i3 and i5 parts. Now I haven't tested overclocking for all of these parts, but I have done so for the six core 12 threaded configuration so that we can 
directly compare that to the overclocked Ryzen 5 3600. So let's kick things off with good old Cinebench, starting with the simulated quad-core 8-threaded CPU, which we will presume as the soon-to-be i3, compared to the current-gen i3 9350K. By implementing hyper-threading and a slight clock bump, here we're looking at a massive performance boost of 34%. This shows just how bad the 9350K is in anything other than a lightly threaded game. When comparing the 6 core 12 thread configuration, which we presume will be the new i5, at stock it sits around 5% slower than the stock Ryzen 5 3600, but improves its score by around 11% by overclocking to 5 GHz. And the 8 core 16 threaded configuration, which is basically a 9900K with a slight clock reduction, performs exactly as you would expect. For that reason, there's no need to double down on the these benchmarks here. If you really want to know how that CPU will perform, just take a look at the 9900K. Now a quick look at the single threaded scores here about what you would expect. Nothing really stand out here seeing as this is the same architecture. All right, now in Blender, again, we can see just how useless the i3 9350K is, which I'll remind you is around $190 US at the time of filming. But by adding hyper-threading support, the 10th gen i3 could leapfrog the stock Ryzen 5 1600 and 2600 when it comes to rendering performance in this scene. Intel's stock 12-threaded configuration would also beat the current gen Ryzen 5 3600 by a decent margin. So adding hyper-threading to the 10th gen i3 CPU would yield a huge performance increase over what we're currently getting with the i3 9350K, which unfortunately makes it look a lot less likely to happen. Adding hyper-threading to the i5 lineup though is something that desperately needs to happen if Intel want to keep up with AMD's Ryzen 5 3600. When comparing the two overclocked, the theoretical 10th gen i5 overclocked to 5GHz would take a 5% lead over the overclocked Ryzen 5 3600 in V-Ray, and then you have to remember that 4th gen Ryzen will likely see another 10% at least on top of this. In 7-zip file compression, we see one of the current gen i5 CPUs way down the bottom of the stack, as 6 total threads is just not enough to keep up here. Again, if Intel did add hyper-threading, we'd see a huge leap in performance, beating out the R5 3600 by around a 9% margin when both CPUs are overclocked. That gap closes to just 2% when we're talking about file decompression though, further illustrating that this is something that Intel absolutely needs to do at minimum to remain competitive in the mid-range desktop CPU lineup. Let's move on to gaming now though, typically Intel's strong point, and what better way to start than with a modern title that is optimized for high core and thread count CPUs. Battlefield 5 plays like a little bit of a train wreck on the current gen i3-9350K, but by adding hype threading to the same CPU and their typical 100 megahertz bump per generation, we see a performance improvement by 27% on average and almost 50% when talking about the lowest 1% of FPS. If they did actually launch this theoretical 10th gen Core i3 CPU for around 150 to 170, it would absolutely dominate as an excellent low to mid range desktop CPU and would be highly competitive against AMD's Ryzen 5 3600 when it comes to gaming. Rainbow Six Siege is one of those titles that doesn't scale in incredibly well with higher core count CPUs, but that's actually a good thing too, seeing as it is a pretty straightforward esports title, and lower core count CPUs are actually able to manage quite easily here. Worth highlighting, by overclocking the theoretical 10th gen i5 CPU, we could actually see the day's return where an i5 is all you need for a gaming rig. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one example that scaled quite well though, and we do see a big performance jump from the current gen i3 and i5 CPUs, and their theoretical hyper-threaded successes. These are the performance gains that Intel needs to remain competitive against AMD's third gen Ryzen, and again, that's not even considering their fourth gen successes which are expected to launch soon after. This just further highlights that this is something that Intel really needs to do. If they think they can launch anything less than this and still on the 14 nanometer process, they really don't stand a chance against what's currently out there, let alone what's coming. Just to illustrate this again, a current gen i5 like the 9400F currently loses to the Ryzen 5 3600 in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but look what happens when we add hyper-threading and a slight clock bump. We see a huge performance boost of over 20% on average, and a 44% performance boost when we're looking at the lowest 1% FPS. And let's not even talk about the almost $200 i3-9350K, it's basically unplayable here. 
So if I'm honest, I almost feel like a bit of a naive fool reading out these massive performance margins, thinking that this is something that Intel would actually do. These are huge margins over 9th gen when we're talking about the Core i3 and Core i5 lineup. The fact is though, they just can't deliver anything less when AMD's Ryzen has so much momentum. To clarify, I'm not implying that Intel are going to be out of business. They still own huge sectors of the market like mobile and enterprise that quite frankly, AMD are not even close to touching them in, but of course they are making slow gains there too. The facts are more home computers, more gaming machines, more home theater PCs, and more DIY home servers are built with AMD Ryzen processors as the days go on. And a big reason for that is the simultaneous multi-threading support. So if Intel think they can remain competitive in 2020 in the mainstream desktop CPU lineup and still on the 14 nanometer process, they really need to pull a page from AMD's book and implement hyper-threading across the board as these leaks suggest. It's no secret that they are losing big time when it comes to mainstream CPUs and they really can't afford anything less at this point. I'd love to know your thoughts on this down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.